What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. If you have pain on the side of your hip when sleeping on your side or with daily tasks, then I'm going to show exercises and strategies you can implement to help reduce that type of pain. If you're new to my channel, my name is Dr. Tom Walters and I'm an orthopedic physical therapist. So again, in today's video, we're talking about pain on the outside of the hip uh, when sleeping on your side. This is a super common complaint, complaint that people mention to me when they come to physical therapy. Usually it's pain right out here on this bone on the side of the hip. This is called the greater trochanter and there's a bursa there so people can have bursitis. Also our gluteal tendons attach on that bone so in a lot of cases people have gluteal tendinopathy, what we used to call tendinitis. Now if I have pain, uh, let's say I have pain on my left hand side, I don't want to, I want to do my best not to sleep on my left side. When I lay, when I lay down on my left hand side, it's going to just put pressure right on that greater trochanter and on the, the bursa and the tendon. So if I'm laying on my left side, I definitely don't want to sleep like that. If you do, then you're just going to flare up the issue and it's going to get worse and worse. So what a lot of people think is oh, I'll just sleep on the other side. Now there's a problem with that. So if I go over and sleep on my right hand side, the pressure of course isn't directly on my painful left hip, it's on my right hand side now. But when I sleep on my right hand side, my hip, this painful side, the top hip, it drops down to contact the other leg, which creates hip adduction. So abduction is when my leg lifts away from my body, adduction is when it goes towards midline. What happens when my hip goes towards abduction is it puts tension on these structures up here on the outside of the hip and it compresses the bursa and tendons right out here on my greater trochanter. So even though you're not putting direct pressure on that side, sleeping on the other side can actually aggravate the issue as well. So if you're someone who is a side sleeper and you just really do better with side sleeping, what you want to do is get another pillow or a body pillow and put it between your legs and sleep like this. This will help to keep my hip in a more neutral position which will take pressure and stress off of the structures up here by the greater trochanter. Now if you can sleep on your back, just do that. But if you're someone, you know, sometimes I talk to patients who just, they have to sleep on their side, that's where they're most comfortable. If you need to do that, then sleep on the other side. So sleep with your pressure on the non-painful hip and then put a pillow between your legs. This is one of the most important strategies starting out to allow the issue or the area to heal. After we modify our sleeping position, the next thing we want to do is incorporate exercises that put gradual load on those glute tendons. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but we have a ton of research now in the tendon pain world showing that tendons respond best and heal when we gradually load them, which means using strengthening exercises to put small doses of stress and load on the tendon. So this first exercise uh, is gonna be an isometric contraction, which means we're gonna squeeze our glute muscles, but there's gonna be no movement. Isometric contractions are really useful in the beginning of tendon rehab to help reduce pain. So what you're gonna do here is take a loop resistance band. I'll put a link for uh, a set of these down in the description if you need some. What we're gonna do is put this around both legs up just above your knees and then we're going to perform a traditional glute bridge exercise but we're going to push out into the band so we're creating hip abduction which requires our hip abductors gluteus medius and minimus right here two of our glute muscles to squeeze which will put tension on their tendon on their tendons and will help reduce pain so what i'm going to do is lie my head down i'm going to push my knees apart put some tension on the band and then i'm going to lift up into a bridge and i'm going to hold here for 30 to 45 seconds and I'm going to perform four to five repetitions of this. When we look at the research on tendon pain, this is the typical isometric protocol. So you're thinking about four to five reps, hold each rep for 30 to 45 seconds and do this each day. And what they've found in lots of different studies in different tendons is that this can help reduce tendon pain. Isometrics have a hypoalgesic effect, so they're sort of like taking ibuprofen. They help to reduce tendon pain gradually. So once you've held for 30 to 45 seconds, then just go back down. You can rest for 30 to 60 seconds, something like that. And then again, you're pushing your knees apart out into abduction, lifting up into the bridge, which creates some hip extensions. We're really working all of our glutes, our hip extensors and our abductors, and we're just holding here, okay? So this is the first exercise. It's a banded glute bridge isometric. For the second exercise, we're now gonna be a little bit more dynamic with our strengthening. We're gonna use our resistance band up above the knees again. 
But this time we're gonna do a standing exercise, so it's gonna be a little bit more functional in terms of how we typically use our glutes and their tendons. So what you're gonna do here, I'm gonna use the back of a chair, you could use a countertop, something like that. It's just nice to have something to hold on to for balance. And again, I was mentioning that my left leg uh, had the pain. I'm gonna demonstrate this movement on my right side so you can see uh, better, but just reverse it if your pain's on the other side. So I'm gonna hold on to the back of the chair and I'm gonna take my painful side and move it out into abduction and I'm gonna go back just a little bit too. So it's a combination of abduction and extension and I'm just gonna go back and slow like that, nice, nice and slow with control, back and forth. So I'm going out into hip abduction and then back in nice and slow and I'm gonna go right to kind of the neutral, that'll be my starting point and then back out. And I'm gonna think about three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions of this and again, performing it each day. Now, if your symptoms are really acute, then you might only do the glute bridge to start with and that might be your only exercise. You can kind of think of this as a progression. Once you can do the glute bridge with mild or less pain, then you can go on to this dynamic banded hip abduction exercise. And again, you're thinking of three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions. In most of the tendon studies, they will use a protocol of three sets of 15 reps. So you can kind of think about that as you're going through this. Okay, so that is our second exercise, banded hip abduction. Thanks for checking out today's video. I hope you find these strategies and exercises to be helpful. In the hip chapter in my book, you'll find a more comprehensive program for this issue right here on page 333 is the gluteal tendinopathy and trochanteric bursitis program. Again, thinking about pain on the outside of the hip, you can see where the glutes and the tensor fasciolata muscle run right here by the greater trochanter. And there's also a bursa there, like I mentioned. All of the programs in my book have pictures of me doing the exercises and they guide you through three phases. So they're gonna be more comprehensive than a YouTube video, more similar to a program you might get if you came to see me in the clinic. So uh, the book has uh, chapters for each body region. It basically allows you to do your own physical therapy at home for the 50 most common conditions. If you'd like to uh, check the book out, I'll put an Amazon link down in the description. Thanks again for watching today's video. I'll see you in the next one, bye.